Beetle. Sweeping down from the underworld to smash gangland comes the friend of the unfortunate, enemy of criminals. The mysterious, all-powerful character, a problem to the police. But a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask in a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk but stronger than steel. As our story opens, our hero, Dan Garrett, is visiting his friend and secret advisor, Dr. Franz, who operates a little apothecary shop in one of the great city's side streets. He is restlessly pacing the floor in Dr. Franz's living room. Look, Doc, why does there have to be so much red tape in police work? Well, Danny, every organization has to have rules and regulations that makes for efficiency. Yes, but the criminals and the crooks we're set to catch aren't bound up in rules and regulations. You know, I like police work, but I also crave action. You seem to get plenty of it, as the Blue Beetle. I worry about you, Tate. These crooks and gangsters are vicious, cold-blooded killers. They'd have no mercy on you if they caught you. I can take care of myself. Besides, that suit of blue chain armor you made me and that mask are a great protection. I hope they never catch you without it, or ever discover who the Blue Beetle really is. I'm afraid it would mean the end of patrolman Dan Garrett. Well, after all, Doc, you're the only one who knows. Even Mannigan is always saying what he'd do if he caught the Blue Beetle. Mm, uh, he's the officer on the beat next to yours, isn't he? Yes, he was my father's pal. I see. He got me on the police force after my father was killed by a gangster's bullet. And uh, doesn't he suspect at all? No, he doesn't. He's a good cop, but he's not very heavy above the ears. Uh, what's that newsboy cracking? Something about a movie star committing suicide. Wait, I'll go get a paper. Here you are, boy. Give me one of those extras. Yes, sir. Keep thank you. Hey, look at this, Doc. Sandra Beaumont, the movie actress, committed suicide last night. The paper said she left a note on a dressing table which said, Dope has become my master. No longer can I live without it. This is the end. Let my fate be a warning to all. What do you think of that, Doc? I think it's tragic, Danny. So do I. I'm going to do something about that dope racket right now. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to ask the commissioner to put me on special assignment to try and uncover the leaders of that dope ring in this city. Oh, uh, you'd better be careful, Dan. They'll stop at nothing. Well, if I can't uncover them as patrolman Dan Garrett, I'll get them as the Blue Beetle. As our next scene opens... Patrolman Dan Garrett, Mike Mannigan, and Charlie Storm, ace reporter of the York City Sun, are standing on the corner watching a hotel suspected of being the dope ring's headquarters. Uh-huh. That's a place, all right. Somebody tipped off my paper. Well, why don't we go in and raid the place? What, just the two of us? Sure. Oh, don't be silly. We've got no evidence. The commissioner wants evidence. That's our job. To watch everybody that goes in and comes out of that place. Me? I like action. So do I. Hey, look. Where? That shabbily dressed man there. He just came out of that side entrance and gave a cigarette to that kid standing there. So what? Looks like the kid gave him some money for it. He's a dope peddler. He's selling dope cigarettes, marijuana. Marijuana? Boy, here's where I make a pinch. Hey, you there. I want to talk to you. Come on, get me, copper. Oh, yeah? You gotta travel fast to get away from me, brother. Go get him, Danny. I'll signal Clancy on the next beat. He'll hit him off at the intersection. Look, Danny's diving for him. He's got him. Boy, that was a flying tackle. Uh -huh, sure what? Hey, look. That car there. There's a machine gun. Look out, Danny! I'm going to take a shot with my revolver as they pass. Yeah. Look down behind those ash cans, Charlie. I'm already got it. Missed them, but got it. Did you get the license number of that car she passed? Yep. CB83725. It's probably a stolen car. Hey, what about Dan and the dope peddler? Those murderers get them? Looks like it. 
The boss stretched out in the street. You phone for the ambulance while I have a look. Okay. I'll phone my paper at the same time. Boy, what a story. Come on now. Come on here. Break it up. Break it up there. Give him air. Hey, let's have a look at him. Oh, they sure got this guy. He looks like a sieve. Sure, and he'll never sell no more dope cigarettes to kids. He's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Look at the blood, will you? Yeah, look at him. This guy here looks like he's dead, too. Danny. Danny. It's Mannigan. Uh, how are you doing, Danny? What happened? Where's the dope peddler? He's dead. You tackled him and some trigger men in a car machine gunned you both. Oh, I remember now. I saw the car coming. Are you bad hurt? I don't know. I can't feel much of numb all over. Well, here's the ambulance. Oh, uh, you'd get a swell ride to the hospital, Danny, and maybe a citation from the commissioner for bravery in action. Well, what's the verdict, Doctor? Will Patrolman Dan Garrett leave? Well, it's very doubtful, Commissioner. An operation is necessary to remove the bullet. But he's so weak from loss of blood yeah, and that's doubt. Tough. He's one of my best men. Due for promotion soon. A message for you, Doctor. Oh, thank you. Pardon me, Commissioner. Yes, sir. Mm. Well, this should be interesting to you, Commissioner. Read it. Let me see. If my blood is the right type... I would like to volunteer as a blood donor for the brave officer Garrett. Uh, why, this is signed by my daughter. Precisely. She's convalescing here from her accident. Well, she's almost recovered, Commissioner. Yes, but, Doctor, is she strong enough? I think so. Then by all means, let her do it. I'm fond as well as proud of Dan Garrett. He's a fine boy, like his dad before him. It'll also make my daughter very happy. I have a sneaking suspicion she likes young Garrett. The commissioner daughter's Mary's blood proved to be the right type and the transfusion was performed. Later, Danny was operated upon in a machine gun bullet removed from his abdomen. For days, he hovered between life and death. Then one night when all was quiet... A strange man slipped by the nurse and stood beside Dan's bed. Dan? Dan Garrett? Who is it? I was calling Dan Garrett. It is I, Dr. Franz, your friend. I've got something for you. Hello, Doc. Now listen, Danny. I want you to take this capsule. It's my secret 2X formula. It will bring you a speedy recovery. Sure. I'm positive. My formula will save your life. Restore you to health in 24 hours will also give you greater vitality, keener eyesight, almost superhuman mentality, and it will give you abnormal strength. You will be a tough hombre when you get out of here. You give it to me. I've got to get out of here. It's important work to be done, and I've got to do it. <laughs> Next morning, to the surprise of everyone, Dan Garrett was completely recovered. From Mike Mannigan and Mary Donnelly, the commissioner's daughter who came to visit him, he learned that the commissioner had ordered extensive raids on all opium dens in the city. At one place, they told him, the police had been blown to bits by dynamite, planted by the dope ring before they fled. Dan insisted on being released from the hospital and restored to duty. By mid-afternoon, he's back on his beat, fully recovered to health and strength by Dr. Franz's magic formula. That night, he visits the little apothecary shop of Dr. Fran. Hello, Doc. Hello, hello, Danny. Well, my 2X formula worked, didn't it? It sure did. Hey, have a look at this. Hmm, that bullet, huh? Yeah, that came out of me. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let's have a look at it under the microscope. Uh, wait like those up shop. Uh, pull down the shades, will you, while I lock the door? All right. There. Now. Now we'll just give this bullet the once over under the microscope. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. What is it, Doc? Have you got something? I think so. This bullet was fired from a show show. A show show? What's that? Oh, 
Why, that's what the soldiers in the last World War called a certain type of French machine gun because they couldn't pronounce the real name. Boy, that ought to be easy to trace. There can't be many of those in this town. Got any ideas? Well, uh, there's a French novelist by the name of Philip Raiden who collects interesting firearms as a hobby. He might know something about this gun. <laughs> Out into the night went Dan Garrett on the trail of the murder gun. But a changed Dan Garrett. No longer is he in the blue uniform of the city's finest. He wears blue, but it's the blue chain armor of the Blue Beetle. The Blue Beetle! Drop that gun, Raiden. I've got you covered. It's no use, Raiden. Your bullet can't pierce this chain armor I'm wearing. I'm sorry to be so rough, Raiden. But I wanted that gun of yours. Now pick yourself up. It's better. I see you recognize my little calling card. The sound of my magic ray machine and the little beetle always signifies the presence of the blue beetle. You... You frightened me, monsieur. I fired for nervousness. I had no... Desire to injure the blue beetle. I see. Uh, oui, monsieur. Uh, what is it you desire? I understand you have an interesting collection of firearms. You uh, make the hobby of collecting unusual firearms, monsieur. Do you own a show show automatic machine gun? Oui, monsieur. You have the only one in the city, I believe. Oh, perhaps, monsieur. I, I do not know. I'd like to see it. Certainly, monsieur. Right uh, this way. And no funny business, monsieur. I am not in the mood for uh, what you call these uh, funny business. Good. Now, here you are, monsieur. This is the gun cabinet. The uh, show show, she is... Monsieur, she is gone. Gone? Oui, monsieur. Always she is here in this place. Come on, Raiden. Your pretended surprise sounds monsieur, funny to me. I Cut it out, Frenchie. That... Maybe you're on the level. Then again, maybe you're not. I'll just dust this door for fingerprints and take a photograph. Now, you stand over there and don't make any false moves. Now, let me see. A little here. Some more here. And several fingerprints. Some of them yours, of course. Bring that floor lamp over here while I photograph it. Now, hold it steady. That's right. Now, that's got it. Well, you find something? Maybe yes and maybe no. Now, you get this straight, Redden. If you want to finish that novel or whatever you were typing when I came in, just forget you ever saw the Blue Beetle. Well, I assure you, monsieur, I, I have no wish Good. to be... If you're on the level, you're safe. If you're not, well, the next time you meet the Blue Beetle, it'll be just too bad. <laughs> Whom will the Blue Beetle call upon next? Whose fingerprints were on the doors of the gun case? Is Radon, the French novelist, a member of the dope ring? <laughs> <laughs> 